We're going to be reading from the book of Jonah. We, uh, we finished that up today. Uh, we'll be reading in chapter 4 in the, in, the, in the last verse of chapter 3. I, I find as, as we study the Old Testament more and more, there's uh, more wisdom and more lessons to learn there than I'll ever learn in my lifetime. Hear the word of the Lord from Jonah chapter 3 verse 10. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, He had compassion and did not bring them the destruction He had threatened. But Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, O oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Have you any right to be angry? Jonah went out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. And the Lord provided a vine and made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the vine. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the vine so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind and sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, do you have a right to be angry about the vine? I do, he said, and I am angry enough to die. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about this vine, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and it died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left. Many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word today. Amen. You know, those of you who are in Sunday school, this is a little, little double dipping on the scripture reading this morning. But, uh, you know, this, this uh, fourth chapter of Jonah uh, really touched me uh, and, and spoke to me. And I, uh, I want to tell you that it's... Uh, for me, it's, it's always been an afterthought. The, the story of Jonah and the whale, although now we know it was not a whale, it was a fish that God provided. The story of Jonah being thrown overboard and swallowed up by a fish and in there three days and three nights, although we know now it wasn't exactly 72 hours, it was part of a day and then a whole day and part of another day. That's how the Jewish people told time back in those days. Three days. Very similar to Jesus being in the tomb. And then Jonah gets uh, spitted out onto dry land, goes on to Nineveh, preaches a sermon, and then everybody repents, and God relents from sending destruction. And that's really all I remembered about the story of Jonah. That's kind of the good parts of it. But the, chapter 4 shows a completely different side of Jonah. 
And in our discussion this morning, we talked about this, and it's not unlike America today. It's not unlike human beings today. You know, we are, uh, a lot of times, we are more concerned about ourselves and what's happening in our lives uh, rather than the people who need God's love and His forgiveness. But the uh, three verses here, the three parts of chapter 4 that really t spoke to me was the three questions that God asked Jonah. First one is, have you any right to be angry? Then he says, do you have a right to be angry about the vine? And his final question was, should I not be concerned about that great city? Now God didn't ask those questions because he needed an answer. He asked those questions because he was trying to teach Jonah. Now a couple of weeks ago we talked about some of the questions that Jesus asked in Scripture. You know, just thinking about God's questions to Jonah today makes me think about a, another question. Real short, but you can add a lot to it. What if? How many times have you said that in your life? Think about that. What if? And then you got a blank there. And you can put in that blank anything that you want to. What if? Made me think. My mom and dad got Married in 1960, my dad was 48 years old. My mom had a eight, nine-year-old and a 15-year-old. Not really interested in having a small child around. Some could say it's a miracle that I'm even here. What if I hadn't been born? There'd be somebody a lot better looking than me standing here today, probably. What if my dad hadn't have taken an early retirement? Stayed in New Jersey and not moved back to Alabama in 1976? Chances are I might not be standing here today. Chances are the rest of my life might have been different. What if Mary Jean had said no? See, I, uh, I met her on Christmas Eve, and you've heard that many times, and saw her again at a birthday party, first of March, that year, the next year. Uh, word got around to Mary Jean that I was going to call her on Monday. And all day at work, she was telling the girls that she worked with. Joe's going to call me tonight and he's going to ask me out and I'm not going. There's no way I'm going. There's absolutely no way. I'm not interested. I'm not going. She told everybody. She professed her determination she was not going out with Joe Disney. No way. So uh, me being direct and right to the point, after an hour of conversation on the phone, I finally got around enough courage to ask her if she'd go to dinner uh, with me on Friday. I uh, told her that uh, I go to friend with a, with a customer and his wife from time to time, and it's me and them, and it's kind of awkward, and I said, it'd be nice to have somebody with me. Because I, I kind of, I was hoping to make her feel sorry for me that I, I was having to go to dinner by myself all the time. I guess that worked. And uh, so she said, she, she said yes. And she hung up the phone and she will tell you this. She will say, my God, my God, what have I done? 
And she, she dreaded it all week long and just knew that she had made a terrible mistake, but she had committed to it and she went through with it and the rest is history. You know, and so I asked myself that question, what if she had said no? Would I have called her again? Would I have been persistent? What if? I can, uh, I can go down a million other what-ifs in my life. And I, I could just tell you that, uh, that I stand here before you today with all those what-ifs in my past answered simply it happened the way it was supposed to by the grace of God. I remember uh, John David Phillips, uh, married to Reagan Kroll. He uh, he spoke at Christ Central one time, and he was talking about identities and who people are. And uh, you know, a lot of people considered him, you know, an ex-Alabama quarterback, and this and that and the other, and who what he did as an occupation. And but he says, I'll tell you who I who I am. I'm a sinner saved by grace. And that's and I've all I'll never forget that I've always related to that and it's exactly exactly how I feel and all those what ifs in my life have just been covered uh, by God's grace in my life. You know I think back to Scripture. What if? And you've heard me say this before. What if Adam and Eve had to turn the serpent down? And not eaten from the tree. What if? Would the earth today be a garden of Eden? What if what if the fall of man never happened? That's a big what if. You know, I, I mentioned to you last week. No briars and no mosquitoes. I don't think there was any of that in the Garden of Eden. What if? What if uh, Noah had said, I don't know nothing about building no boat. What if King David had a mist? Just think if he stood before Goliath, pulled that stone out of his pouch, spun it around his head and let it flung and it whizzed right past Goliath's head. I think scripture says that he had five smooth stones in his pouch. Could have missed five times. Now, God was with him when we know that's why he didn't, but what if? What if King David had never gone up to his rooftop and looked out and seen Bathsheba? Maybe the sword would have left his house. So I want to go back to our our scripture that I read early on, the story of Jonah. And there's a lot of what ifs in, in this book. You know, what if Jonah had not rebelled in the beginning and just gone on to Nineveh? There would have been no boat. There would have been no storm. There would have been no rebellion of the crew. There would have been no throwing him overboard. There would have been no fish to swallow him. There would have been no fantastic story for vacation Bible school and Sunday school when I was a kid. Probably would have been a whole lot to the book of Jonah had it not been for all that. My question for us today is... 
Very simple. Very simple question. Now, we, we, we go through the, the book of Jonah and we, and we see the, the roller coaster of his life over three to four weeks. All this happens. The question is very simple today. What if, what are we, what if we were to be Jonah 2019? What if God were to speak to one of us today? Now, I, I see the look on your faces, and that seems like a little odd question. And, and, and I know how, how I would probably receive that question. Well, I just don't think God's going to speak to me today. So it doesn't apply to me. That applies to the person sitting next to me, maybe, but not me. Well, I want to tell you all from the bottom of my heart, that God will speak to us usually when we least expect it. And a lot of times when we least want it. What if God were to speak to us today and ask us to go to Nineveh? I can tell you that when I felt God speaking to me, God's calling on my life, to go into the ministry, I, I was I was all for it. And you've heard me tell this story before. I guess you know I could be a great helper in the office, be great in administration, planning, facility maintenance. I I think I would be really good at that. So I just kind of walked into that. Lay speaker training school just to, uh, just to get the basics. Never had the slightest intention that I would ever end up standing behind a pulpit, pulpit Sunday after Sunday. And you may all be sitting there today saying, well, you know, that will never happen to me because I'm not going to do that. Well, it might. What if God calls you? Now Jonah, he was a uh, reluctant prophet, I would describe him for me. He, uh, he eventually, after all of his troubles, ended up doing what God asked him to do. But even after... He did what God sent him to do. He went to preach to the people of Nineveh. They repented. Just miraculously. Tens of thousands of people accepted his sermon, repented of their evil ways and their sins, and turned their lives over to God. But yet we read here in, in chapter 4 that even after all those great things that happened to Jonah, he decided he was going to go out on the outside of the city and have a little pity party, stick his bottom lip out, and pout. I think that's the way Ronald described him this morning. And he was just mad about the whole thing. You see, these folks that he was sent to was their mortal enemy. The Assyrians. The Jews hated them and they hated the Jews. Then he has this conversation in chapter 4 because he's mad, he's upset. He's so mad and upset and angry that he's just ready to die. He's out there on the outside of the city just burning up. I've been in a situation like that where I felt like I was just going to burn up and die, and it's no fun, folks. And he has this conversation with, 
with God. And he's just he's just being a spoiled brat. The only way that I can describe him. <coughs> chapter four ends. In chapter eleven, and I think this was really telling. It says, but God says, but Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and many cattle as well. They don't, you know, I've sent you to these people. The right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. These people are clueless. It just reminds me of a saying that my grandmother used to say all the time. I think that those people of Nineveh were lost as a Bessie bug. They didn't have a clue about what was going on. They didn't have a clue how to get out of their jam. That's why God sent Jonah there. And as we learned in Sunday school, that uh, the book of Jonah and the book of Nahum are the only two books of the Bible that end with God asking a question. So the question I have for each one of us today, what if God were to send us on a mission? I don't think he's going to send us to Nineveh, but he may send us to somebody tomorrow, maybe today, maybe later on this week, that needs to hear a kind word, that needs to be encouraged one way or another, that somebody that just might need a smile. Somebody who might just need an ear that will listen and seem like they care. God might send us to them this week. What if? My prayer is that if we uh, are so asked by God to do something this week, that you won't be like me and be scared to death and run the other direction. That you won't be like Jonah and get on a boat and go to the other end of his known world. That you'll realize that if God asks you to do something, He'll give you all you need to make sure that it happens. The Holy Spirit is is a wonderful, magnificent unimaginable and indescribable force of God in our lives. I think the Holy Spirit was what got Jonah where he needed to be and he'll be with us through anything God asks us to do. Now as you're bowing your heads and we close with an invitation today, I'm going to ask Pat if she'll come and she'll play her song Golden Bells. Can you do that? It's not December, but uh, usually Pat plays that in uh, December. You don't, do you play with, with that? Okay. All right. Is that okay? Can you do that for us today? As, as Pat's playing that, let's all... Uh, just think about what we could do if God asked us to do this week. Amen.
what the ladies were singing earlier. I was sitting back here taking it all in, and I just uh, think, as I do most every Sunday, how blessed we are to have Sherry and Pat as our musicians. And uh, just so thankful for them. Uh, uh, I was at a church for four years that had need. Now, God supplied a bluegrass band for us. But uh, uh, it's just a blessing to hear piano and organ. I, I, I think there's going to be a piano and organ in heaven. So uh, thank you all for being here today. Uh, think about the question of what is it? If you would, let's bow our hands. <clears throat> the precious Heavenly Father, I uh, ask a blessing on each person here. Lord, the families, uh, as far reaching as they, as they may be, Lord, I ask a blessing on, on all the churches. Lord, that, that we might be your people. Lord, help us to, to reach out to those whoever you put in our path. Allow us to be your shining light here on earth. Lord, may your, your love, the grace of your Son, and the power of your Spirit watch over us today and in the days ahead. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray all things. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here.